How many of you guys like Sheets? You guys like to go to eat? Does anybody here love Sheets food? Let me tell you about a story about a time where I ate nothing but Sheets food for almost two consecutive months. This one time, we went up, I went up to my mailbox um, up at the main church, okay? And there was a stack of hundreds, I'm talking hundreds of coupon pages for Sheets. Um, and it said, you know, please hand these out. So I gave away most of them, but I kept a, a stack for myself, not, not nearly as many as there were. But these coupons weren't just like any coupons. It wasn't like 20% off or buy one, get one free. I'm talking everything, almost everything on the page was 100% free. Purchase necessary, just turn in the coupon. Fries were free. Any MTO was free. Salads were free. Uh, soft drinks were free. It was an incredible, incredible deal. Um, no strings attached. And, I, and the first time I placed my order, I went to up to the store and, and I showed them the coupon thing that you had, to, you had to cut them out. And I was like, hey, how many of these things am I actually allowed to use in each of my, for each of my purchases? And, they, and he, he looked at the purchase. He looked at the coupon thing. He said, it doesn't say there's a limit. You can use as many of these coupons as you want on these pages. And so I literally would, would order an MTO, get a side salad, get a drink, get a smoothie, fries, like the whole thing. This is before I was doing like any sort of diet whatsoever. And I was just like, I was like, here you go. And they would literally ring it up and they'd say, your total is, you know, whatever, $35 or, or whatever it was. And I'd say, here are my coupons. They'd say, thank you very much. Have a nice day. It was unbelievable. It was so, so cool. Um, that is until one day I went into Sheets and uh, the cashier was, was behind the counter and she was in a mood. She was in a mood and um, I, I was not appreciative of her mood, um, but I, I, she, I have all this stuff and I put it on the counter. I go to hand her the coupon. She's like, I'm sorry, but we don't accept more than one coupon. And I was like, I've literally been doing this for almost two months. Um, like I'm, I'm positive you do. She's like, our policy has changed. And so we are no longer, that is no longer valid. You are only allowed to use one coupon per. And maybe if she would have said it like more respectfully, I would have been okay with it. But I mean, I could feel my ears getting bright red. I was so mad because I'd done this like literally every day for two months. And I'm like, this is illegal. You can't just change, you know, your policy because you realize you're going to lose a ton of money, you know, and somebody's going to use more than one coupon. But after this awkward exchange that I had with the cashier, I walked out having paid in full for my meal, except for the one free, free item that I was allowed to have. My question is, is what leads us to have this really, really strong emotion where maybe we feel entitled, like I felt entitled, maybe we feel ungrateful. Well, we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to talk about the last key to our, uh, the key component to our Sticks and Stones series, which is all about the power of our words. The blow up that I had with the cashier at Sheets was because of anger. It was because of anger. Anger is the driving force behind so many of our cutting words. In fact, I'd venture to say that the most, the most painful words you've ever said to someone were as a result of you being angry. And the reason why somebody said the most painful words you've ever heard is because they were angry with you. Anger is a powerful emotion that can break hearts and can unravel relationships. Now, you might not call yourself an angry person. You might, you know, not say that you necessarily struggle with anger. But the truth is, is that at some level, we all struggle with it. Even if you define your anger as a little bit different, maybe instead of calling yourself anger, like angry, you say, I get annoyed easily. I get annoyed, which is a version of it. Like, and the reason why you get annoyed is because people don't listen to you. And when people don't listen to you, you begin to raise your voice. Or, or maybe your version of angry is you say, I, I just get frustrated. I get frustrated whenever life feels like it's out of control. And so maybe you're the kind of person that lashes out on your loved ones. Or maybe your version of being angry is being upset. You say, oh, I, I get upset because you've been wrong. And your version of getting back at someone is seeking revenge because of you, you, you being upset. You may not call the feeling you feel angry. You might call it being frustrated. You might call it being irritated. You might call it being upset. But it is still the same root feeling of anger. Of anger. 
I want to take a look tonight at a new proverb. We've been looking at the book of Proverbs during this series. And remember that, that Proverbs, each stanza, each verse um, is basically a standalone piece of advice that like a, like a wise father would give to his son or like a great coach might give to her team. And I want you to listen to what Solomon says uh, about anger. This is really fascinating. He says, wise people understand, uh, why, I don't know, excuse me, why did I say wise people? Um, people with understanding control their anger. A hot temper shows great foolishness. So people with understanding control their anger. A hot temper shows great foolishness. Notice in this verse what he doesn't say. He doesn't say that People never get angry, that wise people never get angry. Instead, he says that wise people understand how to control their anger. If we look at the New Testament, in, in, in the, the book of Ephesians, Paul, he echoes this concept when he says, in your anger, do not sin. He's saying, there's, there's going to be times whenever you get angry, and during those times, do not sin. He doesn't say that anger is the sin. Rather, he's saying your inability to control the emotion of your anger and what comes right after your anger is what leads to problems in your life and what leads to sin. You know, when we learn from Scripture that the concept of, uh, of anger isn't a bad thing, it's your reaction to anger that is the bad thing. And, and what we're challenged to do be, be, because of these two verses that I just read, is we have to decide beforehand, before the emotion of anger rises up in each of us, we have to decide beforehand what we're going to do when we experience the emotion of anger. Basically, these verses are saying, hey, you can't control what happens to you, but you can respond, we can control how you respond to what happens to you. Now, I don't know, maybe up to this point in your life, You've always thought that being angry was a sin, that somehow being angry was a sin. And maybe you heard that along the way or thought you heard that along the way or thought that that's what God, uh, he never wanted you to experience or, or be angry. However, you might find it very interesting that actually one of the characteristics that the Bible teaches us about God is to use the characteristic of him being angry, of him being angry. But don't miss this because I don't want you to be confused about what type of anger we're talking about. When scripture discusses the anger of God, it often parallels anger with fire. Anger and fire. This is a powerful metaphor because anger, like fire, can be constructive, can be a good thing when it's controlled. But it can be a very destructive thing when it's uncontrolled. Think about it. When fire is controlled, it allows you the ability to heat up your taco, right? It allows you to go on road trips because you can have fuel for your tank that is then burned in the engine so that your car can move forward. It has the ability to turn on the lights around us whenever fire is controlled. When fire is controlled, it has the ability to propel a rocket ship into space. That is controlled fire. However, you've also seen the destruction of uncontrolled fire. For example, the tragic incident that happened in Plum at Rustic Ridge when there was that house explosion. Or whenever a forest fire desecrates hundreds of thousands of acres of land. Uncontrolled fire, it can kill. It can harm deeply. It can lead to significant loss. So let's parallel this principle of our anger with fire. So when we talk about uncontrolled anger, what does uncontrolled anger do? Well, uncontrolled anger, it pushes people away. Uncontrolled anger, it screams things at people that can never be taken back. Uncontrolled anger, it destroys relationships. Uncontrolled anger is what makes you punch a wall. But what about controlled anger? What can controlled anger do? It pushes you somewhere. It pushes you toward holiness. Controlled anger helps you to fight for what is right. Controlled anger helps you to understand what your core values are and how God has wired you. Controlled anger, like fire, can refine you. It can make you a better version of you. 
And so when you feel the, the, the emotion of anger bubbling up on the inside of you, which you will, then you're at a crossroads. You get to decide. You can either control your anger and let it be a controlled good version of anger, or you can let it control you and be a bad version, an uncontrolled version of anger. So how do we manage it whenever that emotion of anger starts to stir up inside of us in a way that's helpful versus a way that is harmful? Well, whenever we have that emotion of anger, we can, we can, do, we can do anything we want with it, but I want to encourage you to make it a controlled version of anger. And there's four easy steps to remember to help you to have controlled anger. These are, these are pretty memorable. So if anybody asks you tonight, if you go home and your parents are like, hey, would you learn tonight at, at the warehouse? I want you to say, we learned about controlled anger and how controlled anger, um, it, 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 number one, delay. It has a delay. It steps away. It prays. And then it conveys. Delay, step away, pray, and convey. Those are the four things that you should do to, in order to have controlled anger. Let me break them down. The first is this, to delay. What do I mean? I simply mean to call time out on your emotions for a moment and pause. Hold your tongue. Don't spout out something stupid that you don't mean to say. Stop before you speak. Now, this first step of controlling our anger, so it's a controlled anger versus an uncontrolled anger is very, very difficult. It is probably the most difficult part because all of us, we want to react, right? Whenever we're angry, we want to react. We want to just say what we want to say, but we can't. We have to delay. The second thing is to step away. If at all possible, remove yourself from the situation, okay? Do something that calms you down. Now, Whenever I say remove yourself from the situation, that's not me giving you permission to storm out of the room and slam the door behind you so that the glass in the window breaks. <laughs> that's not what I mean whenever I say remove yourself. Instead, you're actively choosing to do something different with your anger. You're moving it from a, an uncontrolled anger where you just want to spout out what you want to say to I'm going to remove myself and I'm going to step away so I can think about what I should really say. Now, just to be clear, Stepping away is not the same thing as ignoring someone. It's not the same thing as, as giving someone the silent treatment. Telling the person that you need a chance to collect your thoughts is what you're trying to do. That telling the person, hey, I just need, I just need a, um, a, a couple of minutes to process here. Um, maybe it'll help you to think of it like this. If you can think about anger like an iceberg, the emotions of anger are the, t the tip of the iceberg. The things that come out in us are the tip of the iceberg. And the reason why it's important for us to walk away is because the reason, the reason why we want to spout out certain things and say certain things is because there's something underneath the surface of the water that's really the issue that's bothering us. So anger is usually just an outward expression of an inward, deeper emotion that we're experiencing. So the reason why I'm encouraging you to step away is so that you can figure out the why behind your anger, because that's where the real healing occurs. But in order to do that with your emotions, you need to pause. You have to pause. You have to remove yourself from the situation so that you don't cause your anger to cause you to sin. And that leads us to our next critical step, and that is inviting Jesus into the conversation, and that is pray. Pray. So we've got delay step away and pray. When you step away and you pause, then it's time to pray. It's time to ask God for his guidance. And guess what? When you do, he will give you the ability to rise above your first natural reaction, which is likely to sin. Okay. He will give you that ability. Plus when you pray and you're asking God's spirit to come into you, what, what does God's spirit give us? It gives us the fruit of the spirit, like it says in Galatians uh, 5.22. You know, we can have things like love and joy and peace and patience, which is the furthest thing from what we want to do whenever we're angry, but God allows us to have those, those things if we ask him for them. These are God-given virtues that will help you to react in a holy way instead of in a sinful way. And last but certainly not least, convey. Convey. Now, that's not a word we, we use a lot, but in order to make it rhyme, I had to use something that, was, that, that would work. Um, so you got delay, step away, pray, and convey. What does it mean to convey something? To convey something simply means to communicate with the person how you feel. 
It's, it's talking, about, talking about it with them so that they understand how you're feeling. If you're angry with a person, it's respectfully telling them how you feel and being open to hearing what they have to say back to you. Having an open and honest conversation about why you're upset. Don't be the kind of person who lets it bottle up on the inside and then let it turn into bitterness because bitterness is like a weed that will wrap itself around your heart. And you don't want to become a bitter person, but you will if you allow that, that anger just to internalize instead of never conveying how you're feeling to the other person in a gracious way. So once you know the cause, the emotions underneath the surface of the water, why you feel the way you do, then you can explain to that person why you're hurting. And, and, and so if you delay whenever you want to react and instead you step away and give yourself a little bit of time to be able to calm down and, at the, and, and also that gives you time to pray and talk to God and, and get more clarity on how you should respond, then when it's time to convey, you can articulate what you're feeling and why you're feeling the way you're feeling. And very likely, you will have a much better response from that person because you're not coming at them with a reaction, but instead you're coming with them and, it, and, it, and, it's, and you have some control over what it is. Instead of an uncontrolled anger, it is a controlled anger. See, one version, it helps us. That's controlled anger. The other, other version, it only hurts us. It causes us to sin. Very likely, it damages the relationship. That's uncontrolled anger. And the sooner you and I can learn to understand our emotions like the emotion of anger, the better off we're going to be. So when it comes to having controlled anger, delay, step away, pray, and convey. Let's pray. God, um, I, I know that if, if people in this room are anything like me, that anger is a, is a very real emotion that can often sneak up on us and and God it is helpful to think of it like an iceberg and and a lot of times we want to react like the tip of the iceberg we, we want to just say what we want to say and we say words we don't mean to say and um, we damage relationships but God often if we just take the time to think about what's underneath the surface of our anger why are we angry and we can pray about that to you and ask you for guidance and also articulate that to someone else that it's going to make a big big difference so God I pray that these, these guys and girls, that as they're hearing this message, that if there's any relationships right now that they're in where they're angry with someone, that even if they've screwed it up in the past, that they would take this to heart and that they, they would um, delay and step away and pray and convey. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your guidance. We love you, Lord, in your name. Amen.